Thank you very much, Chief. Uh, we have a number of members here from the House and Senate, so I will stay within my five minutes. So we ask that your answers be brief. I know that's hard for senators, but we will. Uh, acting architect Rex wrote, uh, we're at the height of the tourist season. There are people everywhere. It is really actually quite wonderful uh, to see. We have had more than one million visitors so far this year at the Capitol Visitor Center. Have staff and volunteers at the Visitor Center kept pace with the increased volume of visitors? Thank you for the question. Yes, ma'am, my understanding is that they have. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, General Gibson, quick question. The board established a process last year for reviewing and making public capital police inspector general reports um, public and four were released this year. It's important for increasing transparency at the department. While at the same time, we know you have to protect sensitive security information. Are you committed to making additional inspector general reports public? What's the expected timeline? Absolutely. Senator, thank you for that question. I am absolutely committed to making those reports public once they've been through a security review. Um, it is an effort we began with this Congress. Uh, our first step was to establish the process and an understanding across all the um, entities who played a role and how we would proceed, and then we began. So I realize um, we have not released them publicly at the rate um, that is desired, and I think Mr. McFarland did a great job of outlining our approach collectively uh, to accelerate that uh, in the future. Thank you. Uh, Chief Major, uh, you talked about restoring morale at the department, hiring uh, new officers, how important that is, while working to retain those already in the ranks. Uh, to build up the department and stay ahead of attrition has been a top priority for you. Um, talk about how the funding has helped. Uh, both houses have worked on funding. Um, and then talk about how you're using uh, this funding in terms of what you talked about, the threat assessment, um, the members and safety at home and the like, and what more uh, resources you need. The. Um uh, the funding has helped in a number of ways. One, it's made us more competitive in terms of being able to attract applicants uh, to the department. Um, it has assisted us in, re in uh, uh, strategies to retain officers um, that, so that we, our attrition rate has gone down. Um, most of the, the uh, uh, increases in my budget requests are directly tied to staffing. And in the, in the beginning, we needed to get USB up to staff so we could op reopen the campus and staff all the posts um, that need to be uh, staffed around the campus. Now the focus is on um, our Protective Services Bureau to, uh, and there's a number of strategies that, uh, uh, that we're, you'll see um, in the coming months and then in the next year. Uh, that will assist us in getting lateral transfers over to our uh, DPD section and investigative uh, agents, as well as um, uh, allowing our officers to, some officers, when they get hired, to go directly to DPD. They wouldn't have to do time in USB if they, uh, if they, we'll put them through the training and they'll go directly to DPD. All of that is, is meant to increase the numbers in DPD as quickly as we can. Can you speak to the role of the department's field offices and the three special assistant U.S. attorneys, that's San Francisco, Tampa, and Washington, and their help in other areas, I, w I believe, in coordinating responses to member threats? Uh, what's the status of the department's effort uh, to open additional effort, uh, off efforts? So it, um, they've really only been in effect for um, about a year or so, so we're still evaluating their effectiveness. But I can tell you anecdotally that they have, they have been a big help in terms of uh, being able to deploy from their locations much more quickly and efficiently than it would be for us to send folks out from D.C. Uh, to, to, for a number of threat cases. They are subject matter experts for all of our investigators uh, as we're investigating those threats and looking toward uh, the possibility of prosecution. Uh, they are the subject matter experts that assist us. Right now, our hope is um, to open up three additional um, field offices over the next year or so, um, Milwaukee, Boston, and uh, somewhere in Texas. So, uh, and, and- It's a big state, so, but- okay, It is, good. but we'll, we'll find a place. All right, excellent. Um, uh, Chief, one last question. Um, you talked about the proposed reorganization 
um, and Mr. McFarland also uh, mentioned it, to help the department to carry out its mission. Uh, could you talk about have you gotten input and communicated with rank and file officers uh, during the process? That's obviously important to us, to Gus, that rhymed, and, and to um, uh, all those involved. Uh, almost any decision I make is informed by my discussions with the rank and file and with the FOP. Um, as I, 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 I try not to ever pass uh, an officer without stopping and, and talking to them uh, for a few minutes, and you get a real idea of what their issues are, what their needs are, what, uh, and, and that's how I, I quickly understood that the biggest issue that we face was staffing, uh, for the reasons that you discussed earlier about the, you know, holding people over and canceling days off, um, that uh, we needed to get a, a, to a staffing level where that is not happening every day um, too frequently. Very good. Thank you. Chairman Stell. 